for Thursday, September 17th. Tonight, thousands turn out for the opening of Portage Plate. Wow, did you ever think it was going to happen? A ruptured gas line forces the evacuation of a street in St. Patel. It'll flash back and blow so quickly you won't even see it. Winnipeg MP Lloyd Axworthy demands that Canada speak out against U.S. aid to the Contras. There could be some very vital Canadian interest involved in Central America. 24 Hours with Sandra Lewis, Mike McCourt, and the 24 Hours News Team, bringing you news, weather, and sports. Good evening. A bit later on 24 Hours tonight, Urban Affairs Minister Gary Doerr will bring us up to date on why the government is hanging on to some businesses run by Crown Corporations but letting go of others. But first, here's the news with Sandra. Good evening. The shopping complex, billed as the salvation of downtown Winnipeg, opened its doors today and thousands of Winnipeggers came out to see it. LeVron Butcher has this report. Portage Place is now open. With that, an $80 million shopping complex, billed as the new heart of downtown Winnipeg, was in business. Wow, did you ever think it was going to happen? This is three city blocks full of stores, restaurants, and theaters. All but six were ready to open today, but even that was disappointing to the center's owners. It is a little, but uh, out of uh, the total of on the main project side of 130 stores, four or five not making it is, is not too bad. Picasso's restaurant missed the grand opening, but workers were busy today racing to get everything finished. The owner vows to be open sometime tomorrow. We're going to work from overtime, and uh, we have a few people working from midnight until noon tomorrow. But ready or not, Winnipeggers flocked in the thousands to see what this place was all about. The Portage Place theme song echoed throughout the main courtyard this morning as people got acquainted with their new downtown landmark. And many agreed Portage Place will make downtown Winnipeg come alive. It'll attract a lot of people, I think. It's really nice. I remember a long time ago when it used to be just plain, and now it's just totally it's like Toronto or something. Many of the stores here are familiar to local malls, but there are about 25 newcomers to Winnipeg and about the same number of homegrown shops and restaurants. The center's owners hope all this fervor will last at least 75 years. That's when this time capsule will be opened, it's filled with Portage Place memorabilia and was put in storage during today's official opening. It's a symbolic gesture highlighting the fact that the lease for the land Portage Place is built on runs out in 2062. That's when governments can buy all this back for a dollar. Yvonne Butcher, CBC News, Winnipeg. And if anything, Portage Place is busier than it was earlier this afternoon. LaVon Butcher is standing by. LaVon? Yes, Sandy, I haven't exactly gone around and counted everybody that's in this place, but it looks busy to me. The developers estimated last week that there would be about 250,000 people come through the doors at one time or another for this opening day. Now, it's been a steady flow since we've been here. We were here early this morning, and it's still busy here tonight. But most of the shop owners are saying that they're lookers, they're not buyers. And uh, I guess it's the curiosity and all the hype that surrounded this development that's bringing them down and uh, forcing people to take a look and, uh, and just see what's going on down here. So now we'll go back to you, Sandy. Thanks, LeVon. At least one question remains about Portage Place. Is it a public gathering spot offering free access to all, or is it just another shopping mall subject to tight security? As Ross Rutherford reports, there's still confusion about who makes that decision, the public body in charge of the development or the private mall developer. Today, a workman was fixing door locks at Portage Place. But the issue of who holds the keys to those locks is causing Portage Place some embarrassment. Last night, Cadillac Fairview used the building to throw a private party for invited guests. The media were barred, even after the president of the North Portage Development Corporation, Izzy Coop, inquired why they could not get in. Cadillac Fairview said it was a private function, and when a CBC News crew was found inside, they were ordered out. Reporters could not even gain access to the public courtyard. The question is, who will ultimately control those courtyards, and who will decide what community groups get to use them, and who can't? Izzy Coop says the North Portage Development Corporation and Cadillac Fairview have set up a joint committee to handle all requests. But neither side will speculate who has the final say 
if there's disagreement among members on who should be allowed in. Oh, yeah. well, we've been meeting and we're starting the program the next uh, several months. Any disagreements in that management meeting? No, as to whether no. I think the, the, there have been uh, sort of uh, terms that were set out in the original management agreement that basically set out where, what the objectives were, what we were trying to do, what were the kind of things that we wanted to happen in this space. But if Cadillac Fairview on the management committee wanted to say we don't want them in here and two people from North Forty said we'd like to see them in there as an even split, who is the final say? You know, you're belaboring this. Yes, I, right. I am. I'm just trying to ask to find out whether or not it's really no, controlled no. by Cadillac Fairview. No, no, manager? the management committee, that by agreement, the management committee has the final say. And it's, as I say, you know, this is a, a matter of vote, it's a matter of consensus. And we don't foresee that there's going to be any problem in this. Jim Bullock is the president of Cadillac Fairview. And like Coop, he won't speculate on who has the final say if his company and North Portage Development members cannot agree on an access request. In terms of the leasing of retail shops and their operations, certainly that's the purview of Cadillac Fairview. But the use of the Edmonton Court area here behind us, for example, is a, it's a public space, and uh, it will be used for uh, concerts and entertainment and, uh, and a lot of activities completely unrelated to shopping. So that will always be open to the public? That's right. There are, there are stringent agreements uh, between ourselves and the corporation as to hours of business that will keep the public areas open and uh, pedestrian walkways across Portage Avenue and so on. It really is a unique set of agreements. One thing is for sure, no activities will be allowed in the public courtyards, which are open to the public from 7 until midnight, without prior approval from the joint committee. A committee that for now says it's not going to have a problem with deciding who has ultimate control. Ross Rutherford, CBC News.